please welcome Daniel Harris, maybe, and Scott Taylor Compton. There they are. So we learn from one another. So I think that's a really great outlet for me as well. Because constantly when people are writing in, I'm like, oh fuck, I should like put that to my life as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it really makes you think about yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And break you know, break your own psyche down a little bit. Okay, so before we talk about Halloween, because I know that's why a lot of people are here, I want to talk to you ladies separately about two separate projects that you both did. Um, for you. You know, on our podcast, we just covered Natty Knox for Halloween oh, night. And we, yes, we loved it. We had a great time with it. Yes. It was so fun. Thank you. And, I mean, even, like, the producer messaged me, and the young cast listened to it, and they loved it, oh, too. Oh, good. And I said, thank you for showing so much love to our oh. kids. Has anyone here seen it? It's called Natty Knox. Oh. Yes! It's brand new. So it couldn't promote it because we had a strike. Yeah. So it would suck. We weren't now able to promote it. Now it's promoted. Now we can. <laughs> so it's streaming. It's written and directed by Dwight Little, who directed Halloween 4. Mm -hmm. um, it was our first time teaming back up in 35 years together. And it's, it's myself. It's so crazy and seeing you play a mom. <laughs> That's so crazy. Is it because the kids are older? Is that what makes it weird? Because you know me as a mom. 
I know, but is it yeah. on film? It's, it's a film. Me. Yeah, it's when you watch it on TV. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, she's a mom. <laughs> <laughs> is that not how she parents? Is it different? Yeah, it's than... definitely not how you parents. No, <laughs> no, dude. Am I nicer to my kids? <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah, you are. You're a really chill mom. You really are. You're so sweet. Until you go scout, cover your ears. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Once I was like, okay, I don't, I don't like to yell, you so know. Funny. And I grew up in a house where we yelled a lot, or I didn't yell, but everybody else around me yelled a lot. So I don't do that around my kids. It's very quiet and chill. And then every once in a while, they just. It's either that or spank them. I haven't done that yet, so I just yell, and they're butt puckers, and we're good to go. I got a lot of spankings as a kid, and I yeah, deserve so every I. one of them. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I earned that. <laughs> so go see it. It's again. It's it's Robert England, yes, um, Bill Mosley, and myself, um, and it's um, streaming right and now. And a lot of really talented young people that you're definitely going to be seeing in the future, especially Jana. Oh my God. Oh yeah, she's great. Right. So. Please check it out, and it's on Tubi. You can see for free right yeah. now, and everything. Tubi. So you got no excuses not to see that. Not to, oh no, how did that come into your life? Dwight. Dwight, Dwight called me. And did said, you just say do this movie? No, he said I need a favor. <laughs> <laughs> we have no money. I'm self financing it myself. But you get to play a mom. He's like you'll forever be Jamie, but now you're going to be Mom Diane, a realtor. And I was like, done. Just tell me what you need. Also, that was it. See you as a realtor. Oh. A realtor, yeah. yes. Which I am. You know, yeah. I did get my real estate. I know, license. I know. I was like, wow, it's coming to life. It's a whole other persona. Yeah, it's such a fun little movie. And, you know, I had no expectations. And it's not gory. It's not super scary. It's just there were some really good pieces of it. It's very simple. It has some good comedy, too. And yes. it's, anyway, check it out, guys. It's brand new. I'm so excited to watch it. Yes. And we loved it. So it's part of our new Halloween rotation. Yes. Awesome. Along with the other Halloweens, of course. For I'm you. so afraid what you're about to bring up. She's <laughs> like 40 like, movies which she's movie done in the last year. About oh, they're not, it's not, yours isn't recent. Oh. But I love it. And it's okay. very controversial opinion, but I really like your April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh my god, I don't even remember that movie. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, I was 18. Guys, I was so young. long ago. Yeah, I love it though. Oh my god, that's so crazy. I had red hair. It was great. And lots of you had, yeah, yeah. You had a lot of good fashion moments too in that one. You I had like did. a go-go look at one point. I did. I thought that was the movie I did right after Halloween. Yeah. That was the first offer that came in was April Fool's Day. And I had not seen the original. Good, because it's nothing like the original okay, no, at all. No, it isn't. It isn't. That's why it's a lot of She was a fun character to play. Yes. Yes. Then, but then, like, you know, I'll fuck you up. So that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I was like, that was, my, that was my interest. I was like, oh, she's the bad one? I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, done. Coming from, like, you know, Laurie Strode to that, I was like, this is really cool. Yeah, so good. Okay, so I'm going to throw it out to the audience. Let you guys have your turn. Do we have any questions yeah. right off the bat? Right there. I already asked. I'll ask again. What are you excited about your future projects or what you're doing now? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's been a long time. Fucking say it, We haven't been in a movie together, so we are, we have scouts come up with some great ideas and we've written our own shit and we're gonna continue up to do our own things. So we already have our first script done, so we're gonna start that probably spring of next year. So every year we're gonna, we wanna do like a, I don't know, like a, a way for you guys to see us as different characters for each, but still have a relationship. Like American you. Horror Story, yeah. how they do it. We're doing yeah. it. And we're going to bring all your all favorites, all our friends in. We have really, really, really good ideas. And the first script, I'm very excited about. So. We play lovers. Fuck, bitch, we haven't announced that! <laughs> A lot of fucking and fighting. Oh my god, is anybody recording? No. <laughs> ah, there she is, I found her. Do you want me to edit that part out? Oh, that is so funny. No, we haven't announced that yet. Yeah, we're playing lovers. Wait, it's will just that, fine. Will that be announced to everybody else? I guess soon now. <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast. I'm trying to get you excited about it. You teased it like that, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did we? Did we? Were, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was just because I wanted to make out with her. <laughs> now I wish came true. <laughs> and how close are we to, to that happening? I mean, spring, really. Yeah. Ideally, just a matter of finding financing and figuring out who we want to go to and, and how we want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's minimal locations and not a lot of cast. And, you know, so it'll be, it'll be just about character and gore. Yeah. And fighting and all kinds of other fucked up things. Yes. <laughs> you know, things that we know you guys would like to see and we want to do. So. That's what yes. we're all here for. Yeah. And then I also, I have a movie coming out um, 
December 8th called The Creature Was Stirring, which is a Christmas horror movie with Chrissy Mess and Connor Paolo. And um, a very fucking scary creature. A very fucking scary creature. Uh, so that comes out. And then. You can pre order it now, though, right? Yes, you can pre order it on Amazon. And then I have. Physical or only streaming? Um, physical and streaming. Yeah, in selected theaters. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. And then I have a movie coming out next year with Richard Dreyfus, and it may or may not be a shark movie. Oh. Um, and then I did a movie in Thailand. Um, yeah, that comes out next year. Yeah, there's a thought. You got a lot of movies coming out. Yeah. I'm Stay so tuned. excited for the Christmas movie. Christmas horror is my favorite subgenre of yes. horror, so I am all for that. Hopefully, it comes to Chicago for the theaters. Yeah, it, it is. is actually. Yeah, it is coming to Chicago. I am all in. Christmas. Yay! All in. Awesome. Amazing. Okay, any other questions? In the backpack. Uh, yes, question for Danielle. Uh, what was it like working with Donald Pleasant on set? You know, it's funny because I just rewatched Halloween 5 a couple months ago. I hadn't seen it in many years, and I didn't realize how awful Loomis is to Jamie. <laughs> like, he's really horrible. I mean, I, I, I was, I think I caught, like, first I caught the end, it was the end where he's holding me as a human shield in front of him, <laughs> and shaking the shit out of me, and I was like, whoa, this is fucked up. I don't know why I never thought about it. I mean, I knew, like, That's other things. have children. Oh my god. I knew other things they did to me in the movie were fucked up, but I didn't realize that the characters were also fucked up to her. <laughs> You know, like putting me in front of a moving car, like that's like horrific. Without like really knowing, you know, it's like there's so much smoke and you're just like, oh God, I hope that he doesn't run me over. Which it almost happened numerous times. Or like going over those trees. Like there's no rehearsal for that stuff, you know. So and the, the only story I really have from Donald, because he was quite a bit older than me, so we didn't really talk much, um, uh, was, uh, this, I've told this, it sounds like I've heard this so many fucking times. No, um, I love it. You're like, uh, the scene where he comes in, he goes, Jamie, tell me what you know, you know. And I make this, like, weird look. I think I'm sitting around the table, almost on the phone, making that, like, that weird little noise that I was making because I couldn't talk. And I make this weird face, and it was because the smell of bourbon coming out of his mouth <laughs> was so strong. I have never been that close to anyone with that breath, like that hot, watery eyes that you see me like, like making a face. And it's literally because now when you go back and watch Halloween Five, you're like, whenever that seems where I make that face, it's because I was like, what is that smell? <laughs> So, I love Donald. Love Donald. Dwight Little, the director, is like, Donald's great until like 3 a.m. And then you're like, okay, we're going to have to get him a drink. Because to just get through the cold and the scenes and the late nights and stuff. So, But he's earned it. There'll, no be, there'll be no better Loomis than, than Donald. He still performed very well. Oh, yeah, of right. course. He's English, too. I mean, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Him and Malcolm at home. Yeah, exactly. I doubt Malcolm drank on set, though. Did Malcolm drink? No. No. I saw it in that, yes. Can you give us the specifics on this party you guys are going to be throwing for the trip? <laughs> We're trying to I don't figure think, it I don't out. think a lot of people know about that. I think a lot of people do know about that. Yeah? Yeah, we've been hearing it a lot. Does everybody know about the fan vacation that we're doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes! That sounds fun, right? Yeah! I'm fucking stoked. Tell us more. I can't wait to do activities with y'all. So I think drink. we're gonna do like different things next year. I mean, as much as we love conventions and we're we'll still be going, I feel like there's... We, do you, do we you want to announce the other thing that we're gonna do? I think we should. I just think we should. Yeah, so... We have, well, I had this idea last night or something that, here's the deal, we don't get to go and have fun, because we're always working. So we're trying to figure out how we can validate having fun and including, like, everybody in it. So, and at these cons. Like, we're yeah. always at our table, but yeah. we never, ever get to be able to hang out with you guys at the parties right. and all that kind of stuff. Once we started awesome. doing our Talk Scary to Me Lives that we've been doing, I don't know if anyone here has come to any of those we've done, um, but they're so fun that we're just thinking of new creative things to do. So I always wanted to go to summer camp uh, and I ne never did because we were kid actors, we were working and like, you just didn't do it. So I know there's like camps for adults and I thought, oh cool, it's kind of like Friday the 13th or sleepaway camp or like, you know, like ghost stories around the fire and like camp activities and cocktails. And so I think we could do like a summer camp weekend where we all stay in cabins and like, 
hang out and have parties and bring in some musicians and maybe some food trucks and I don't know, just just like a smaller, intimate, like as many people as in here for three days. Then we can all hang out with each other. Yeah. Party! And party. <laughs> Be cool, right? So cool. Yeah. yeah. It's different. I, like, you know, we did a survey on the thing and I thought people always, everybody in my wanted to go to Alaska. I'm like, uh. I wanted to go to Italy. They want to go to Italy with her. They want to go to Alaska with me. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys will be separate? Or no, no, no. We're gonna, we'll be together. Okay. Yeah, so that survey just helped kind of figure out where everybody wants to go. Yeah. And what time of the year everybody wants to go mm -hmm. next year and what everybody's budget is. Mm -hmm. And then by that point, uh, next Tuesday is when it's done with the survey. Um, and then Danielle and I will choose the location. Yeah. And then we will open up. That's only going to be 24 it's people, though. Only 24 people. Yeah. It's very intense. That's a small, much, much smaller scale. Yeah, so that's why we had the idea of the adult horror summer camp. Where we can so all we go. have more people. So we're doing it's both. It's a big party. Yes, yeah, so just look out for it. And that. any ideas you guys have on fun things like that? I mean, we thought of like Salem or like other things within the states that are like more drivable friendly where we can like incorporate, you know, springs or like cemetery visits or I don't know, spooky stuff. Yeah. Southern Illinois. Yeah. Okay, right. Sure. We're pretty spooky out here. Just go ahead. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Speaking of that, I do a lot of, uh, like, especially cruises. Mm. What about something like that for, like, a horror cruise? I'm, and so I'm a little scared of cruises. Are <laughs> <laughs> very nice in the water? <laughs> I'm not going, you don't go in the water on a cruise. Well, in the ocean. Did you not see? Cruise. Yes, that's like, why I don't go anymore. Dude, I've done it. Like they're like, yeah, yeah water is like getting in this shit. Yeah. it's like Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't know. That's how it all started. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw that too. But like, I guess there's like stuff to do. I mean, we would definitely do like an all-inclusive where like you're, you're lodging your food, all the activities, like everything is like already there, so we can all just be together. But I don't know if you and I can just. Do a big ship like that. No. Like that's the only thing. It would. Yeah, it would. Just it would just, two, but there's so much horror. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they, they used to do, do that like with that. Um, Walking Dead. Used to have those. Yeah. yeah. But then the people complained Start about like it wasn't intimate enough. Like right. you could barely see them. Yeah. You like this is. That. Yeah. Like knocking on everyone's doors. Oh my god! You're trying to turn your turn that way. I'm gonna make you a pelican out of a towel. <laughs> called Uncruise and they do Alaskan cruises and it, they're small boats. Oh. So it would have everything in there. So everybody will go want to go to Alaska? Alaska. 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 I still can't figure out how those giant boats float. You know, I just see the, the I mean I've been on cruises. I've been on Carnival and I did that for my 30th birthday. I like that stuff. Yeah. I've only well, went once when I was a child. Yeah. Yeah. And we got back. I mean Disney, I do Disney. Cruise. That's what I did. Yeah. The Disney cruise. But I was filming but they're commercial. Expensive. They're like six thousand oh, dollars yeah. for a Disney cruise. That's oh, yeah. fucking insane. Yeah. It's yeah. Would you guys ever consider doing something that involves ghost hunting? Fuck yeah. yeah. Sure. We want to do a Jack Osborne. He does that. Yeah, we talked about ghost hunting with yeah. him. Yeah. I think we're gonna do some of those ghost huntings with do him. You guys next have year. anything where we're the paranormal group that's over there. Do you guys have any questions or anything? We do events too. So. Okay, cool. Have you yeah. seen some shit? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, uh, man. We've been to a lot of places. Uh, we actually been to Six Legs for America, and investigated the theme park with nobody there and everything. It's Is it crazy. haunted? Oh, God, yeah. Wow. We're doing our paranormal really? panel tomorrow, and we're going to show people for the first time our evidence we captured there. Oh, wow. Has anyone died there? Oh, yeah. On the roller coasters? Probably. A lot of people die on roller coasters. Die on roller coasters. Yeah. It's, 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 it's safe. It's safe, but people die. It's safe. They take the roller coasters down when you die on them. Oh, okay. That's it. It's yeah. it's so interesting. Like I'm I'm very sensitive to that sort of stuff. I don't know if it was like being raised in the mortuary or whatever, but it's always like negative. Mine's always like like really really bad. Yeah. I had to, I was staying at the Brown in Louisville, Kentucky, which is really, really haunted. Right. And I was filming a movie and I had to leave my hotel oh, wow. because it was, it was affecting me a lot. Um, but yeah, I'll have like pressure where it just feels like it's like on top of my body and I can't breathe. So it's just like always a negative thing. So that's why I'm really scared about those hunting. <laughs> but I'm, I'm willing to, to give it a shot. There you go. I've only had positive experiences with ghosts. I think it's people I know. 
Maybe it wasn't ghosts. Maybe it wasn't Maybe ghosts. Was mm -hmm. Someone's trying to fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a difference like between, between ghosts and demon. Yeah. Depending on your life. Of course, my luck. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in here I saw, yes. Um, with the podcast, I love that you guys get some really like the nitty gritty things you talk about. Have you read any like producers or agents be like, can you please take that off the podcast? We don't like that. Any kind of like story? No, we run our own show. Yeah. Yeah, and even actually when we were signed with Bloody Disgusting, Scott was like, are you so just making sure you guys are, like, you're cool with the content because it's going to stay the same. And they were like, yeah. Yeah. And we, we're also very protective of one another. So if we do talk about something, and we'll bring it up to one another and be like, are you sure that you want that on there? Or there's only been a couple of things that we've taken out ever in, in all the Yeah, I think two episodes, episodes yeah. was stuff. Scott gets a little more concerned about if about shit that I say. What? Like, Are you sure? Me too, man. I'm just protective over you, and I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Fuck it. And then you hear me bitch about it on the show afterwards. People talk shit. Yeah, shit, yeah. I get, I get. But it's, it's, you know, it's my producer brain. Yes. I just, like, I'm, I'm very protective of ev every person that I have in my life. So I'm always like, being sure? Just making sure, and, you know, teach their own. Yeah, but that's like a real concern because when it's a fucking friend, man. I know. <laughs> when Days of the Dead said we want you to be the official podcast of Days of the Dead, I said you're gonna take my show because it's mine. I bought the copyright is mine, right? You know, like and he's like, no, that's it. Bill's like that stays the same. I'm like, okay, then fine, great, yeah. awesome, thank you very much. I accept. There you but go. But I'm like, you gonna take my show? What does that mean for my show? Are you gonna change it? Right, right. No, I'm not gonna be God, censored. Control over it. No, it's mine. <laughs> I worked yeah. on this, my baby, I bought it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's a very real concern when you go into collabs. You uh, go in the hallway, you can come in. <laughs> <laughs> it's standing room only in this room, and this is very exciting. <laughs> so exciting. Okay, someone over here, I lost you. There. Um, Rob Zombie seems to cast the same actors a lot. Um, you guys read the Anything you might be doing? He doesn't cast us, though, fucker. <laughs> he likes all the old people. <laughs> Who are our friends, of course. Um, so I'm working on a, a, a book uh, about my life, the, the Diaries of the Mortician's Daughter, um, that comes out next year. And I originally was trying to pitch it as a TV show. That's my goal, is to make it like a, a young adult like a TV show. And I originally went out to Rob, and I, I talked with Rob about being the showrunner for it. And he had already done, um, he was like, listen, I just did one with Mila Kunis, and it was a fucking nightmare. And I was like, oh, okay. And it's probably the politics of everything, you know? It's a really hard industry. Um, but he's offered to direct the pilot, so I'm just hoping, man. I'm hoping that it just goes um, to a show. That's the goal, so we'll see. So buy the book. Hopefully. Yeah, we can make the show. And of course, we'll be able to find out all those details online, on your Instagram, on the show, all that. Yes. Yes. Awesome. All right, anyone in the back that I haven't seen? Yes. <laughs> um, I do, actually. Uh, so, well, Christopher's past, you know, played my brother, Zach. Um, I see, um, uh, my God, I'm fucking brain farting right now, Kenny. Um, yeah. Keith. I see Keith and Pinky at shows like this, who's great. I love that he signs those white dishes. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's so, so funny. Um, Robert, Gorman, my little brother, he lives in, I always like best friends with him growing up too. Um, my mom and his mom were good, good, good friends. Um, I haven't seen Christina since, since then. She's one of my favorite actresses, one of my favorite people. Um, I loved her recent show, and I'm just hoping that she does. She hangs in there health-wise. Sad, very sad to see her. And then, yeah, Bruce Willis, too, seeing him kind of decline this year has been, it's made me realize our, we're not going to be here forever. It's crazy. Um, so that's pretty much it that, that, was, that I hung out with, but I had such a good time on that movie. No. Fuck Daniel. You heard it here first. <laughs> but they said they were going to, so I'm just oh, like, but I've been, you know, listen, at the end of the year, I don't have to see anybody until next year, so if I get in trouble, I'll be hiding in my house in Texas. <laughs> listen. With the recent wrapping up of the Laurie Strode story mm -hmm. and the new deals with the TV and the film rights, 
are the scripts pouring in for the return of Jamie Lloyd yet? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Nothing's pouring in. But I, we, we Scout and I talk about it a lot. I think that there's there's so many different um, uh, timelines within the franchise that I think they're smart to do a, a TV series. And they could revisit her story, my story. You know, there's like five different things going on. So your own adventure. Yeah, if every every season focused on a different different characters, different storylines, and figure out a way to kind of bring them together. It'd be really, I think it'd be smart. But I don't know, studios don't really get like what fans want. It's so fucking crazy. It's weird. It's, true. it's weird. Like why don't they listen to people? I don't know. They should walk through one of these and they Yeah, yeah. man. Exactly. Can you imagine those te those guys here? <laughs> <laughs> be scared. Yeah. Be scared. So this is just, we are the ones that yeah. are wanting to see the movie, you know, or watch the TV show. They're just they're they're making it for the wrong audience. Yeah, maybe it would give them a, a hint. Yeah. They see all those dollar signs. That's all they see. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, we're mon we're walking money here. <laughs> um, you, yes. uh, if you were gonna do something specific with like the future of Mike Myers and Jamie Lloyd and Laurie Strode, like what would you want to do as your characters? Oh shit! Mm -hmm. I know what you want to do. <laughs> Maybe then I'll come back and play your friend. <laughs> yes. Your yes. best friend. <laughs> you want me in the hallway? Yeah. Um, yes, I'll help you in the hallway. <laughs> um, I mean, I would like to see where Jamie is now as an adult. Um, you know, my idea was that she'd like gone away and, and sort of disappeared and maybe has a family of her own and then things start happening with her family or her daughter or son or her, you know, because really at five, like I was connected to him telepathically. I would see what he was seeing out through his eyes. So um, I, I'd be ashamed to see where she is right now. In order to stop it, maybe I've got to go back to Haddonfield and, and revisit that that story. I think the more you say it and the more you manifest it and the more you talk about it at these things, they're bound to listen. Well, it's been coming up a lot in the last year. Like people weren't talking about this two years ago. Well, I think like, the last ones came out. Yeah. 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 Or it was like, are you? I think a couple years ago, it was like, are you gonna do, do a cameo in any yeah. of these three? You know. Well, and that that just like pisses me off. I'm just like, how the fuck did they not ask for you to come back to the uh, those ones? I don't know. I was just baffled. But well, was it I come back as Jamie then? It's like, I think it was, I don't know. I don't know, man. I feel like I came back in Rob Zombies because I didn't do Halloween 6. But it was So it was like easier to like, I didn't yeah, die. And, and and Rob did. I think I could be a character three times. But Rob did an amazing job for you. Though. He did. He like, did. Sit, sit, having your send off. 100%. Like, it, it, that's yeah. the best send off to be. ever. I remember when the script was different than, yeah. than what we shot. Yeah. I was the only one that didn't die by Michael Myers' hands in this in Halloween too. There was no scene between Annie and Michael. He, she just came up and saw the aftermath. Yeah. And I was like, dude, bro, people are gonna be pissed. I'm the only one that doesn't have a scene with Michael Myers, and I die in this movie. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tyler and I just he just said roll the cameras, and we were like, let's just fight it out and see what happens. And then Tyler destroyed the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about that scene after. Post scene was Brad finding you. Oh my god! You know he never saw me in real life. He didn't want. I said I'll be here yeah. if you want to see what what you know. And he was like, I don't want to see it, Daniel. I can't see it. I have dark. I can't. Yeah. And he did it just with nothing. It was, it was so good. He's such a nice man. Yeah. So talented. Oh my god. He's a force. You, yes. You. Me. All right. Uh, this is for Danielle. It's kind of a two-part question. One. Um, I heard that you were going to direct again and that Joe Dante was going to mm -hmm. produce your movies. Yeah, what's going on with that? Yeah. No one has any money. <laughs> yeah, because George the money is. Yeah, because George Dante can't find financing. It's crazy. That's crazy. We still, they still keep renewing the option for the script, so we still have it. Um, and then the strike, and just there's been, you know, we had COVID and like the all kind of everything just been fucked. The world's been fucked up. The world is fucked up. So um, yeah, I think that it's just hard to to find financing now. I feel like there's no in between. People are making movies for like a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million dollars. You know, it's like there's no middle class. Anymore. And it's about to get worse, especially with yeah. the strike over. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like with AI coming in, it's about to get. Worse. Everybody so wants to work much. too, so it's just gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. And the second part is so Scout's got her book. When is your memoirs? She's I'm writing it. Yay. I'm writing it. I've actually been working with uh, the writer that did Kane's book last year. We're going to get together, um, and he's got a deal with Simon and Schuster, and and we're gonna we're gonna. I, I've been I literally am outside my office. I have bins that I pulled from storage of all my like old scripts and 
photos and stuff from growing up. And so I'm, I'm chronicling all of that stuff first and then sitting in, and really, I think I just talked to Scott yesterday and I was like, how, I was just talking about this after, but it's like, how much do you reveal? I don't want to change the names, but like, how much am I really gonna, gonna out people? It's kind of... See, this is where I go, Danielle, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, let me read the book first. Uh, I was like, well, he did really force himself on me. I think, are you sure? <laughs> so not that he's super famous. It's fine, it's cool sure. afterwards. <laughs> so are we gonna get a Scout Danielle like, tandem book tour? Like, go on book oh, tours yeah. together, please, <laughs> and thank you. We're yes. just forever gonna be paired up with one another. <laughs> Thing for you guys, though. It'd be interesting, you know, there's a lot of, there's like, even though you know us a lot more through our show than you did maybe two years ago, there's still so much that we haven't even scratched the surface, so the books are, are going to be really um, interesting. Yeah. Alright, way in the back, in the center. Yeah, um, well, at first I got the script for, well, the size for Untitled Rob Zombie Project, so it wasn't even like a Halloween project, and Rob doesn't like to see people in person, he likes to see off of tape, so I went into a casting director and um, did this scene, and uh, I didn't hear anything for like a few months. And then all the news started coming out with Rob Zombie doing Halloween, and I think pretty much everybody was already cast. They cast everyone. They even asked fucking Danielle to come back. Like they like literally had done everything, and they were having such trouble finding their Laurie Strode. And Rob told me on on the first day, um, well, not on the first day, but while doing the first movie, he was like, "You were the first audition that I saw, and the first person that I wanted." And it was kind of a studio battle, you know? They they were really like fighting each other. I think I think originally it went up to like Kristen Stewart. Um, I, I heard Kristen and then I heard like Danielle Panabaker. Like the studio was like really pushing for me not to be the girl. Um, I think because I was underage. <laughs> uh, seven, I was like an actual like fucking teenager. Um, the wine scenes. So, um, sorry. Uh, anyways, so yeah. So when I when I went into like there was two testings that I had to do, and one was with Danielle. And um, I remember coming in and I saw all the headshots of all the actors on this wall, and I just saw myself like dead center, my headshot just dead in the middle. And I remember I was so fucking nervous, and um, I had like my head down, I was looking at my sides, and I was like kind of shaking, I was just really, really, really nervous after I realized what it was. And um, I remember like these big boots coming in, doosh, doosh, doosh. And I remember seeing them, and then seeing these like flare pants, and it was just literally like a movie, like I was just looking up this dude's body, and then just seeing this wild hair, and he's like, hey, you're not wrong. Hi! <laughs> And I went in and I read and, and then I read with Danielle and humped her in the chair in this small little office. Or you humped me in the chair in this small little office. And then I didn't hear anything for a week. And then I came back and did a screen test with Christina and Danielle and myself. I had red hair. Like, I, you know, they, they put me through the ringer for sure. Um, but then I got it, man. Rob yeah. fights for who he wants. Yeah, he really does. When he believes in you, man, and he really, really wants you, he'll he'll do anything. Um, yeah, he's such a good person. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. I saw a little hand back there. I'm not she, sure if she, she left. left. She, she left, left. to leave. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Left. I missed her. All right. Um, sorry. Hi. Uh, first off, congratulations on the partnership between Talk Scary to Me and Bloody Disgusting. Thank you. Woo Thank yeah. you. Secondly, um, I was going to ask you, but she spills more secrets, so I'll leave it up. I know, she does. What and do you, names. What do you expect out of this partnership? What have you asked for, and what are we they expect, We would love an actual partnership where we yeah. create content together. You know, not just thing by thing, but you know, we have our movies we want to do, and they're, they're doing that too now, you know, Screenbox, and 
would love to see our podcast um, be filmed and actually, um, you know, on TV, on on their network, um, you know, kind of like how Howard Stern used to have it back in the day where everyone's coming in and, you know, it's kind of cool and everybody can write in and stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Scott, I, you should see our text threads. Her and I, it's like a random. We're the same brain. All hours of the day. And then well, like Daniel, what about like, this idea? What about this? What about yeah, this? What about this? Idea. this? I know what you mean. Yeah. And you know, you get to create a creative friend and you're like, let's fucking do it. And we're both pretty fearless with like contacting people or, or like making our own shit happen. Um, because we feel safe with you guys. So we're like, if we, if we create it, we're, I don't feel like we're going to fail. Because you know, you only fail if you don't try to do something, I guess. So. Um, so hopefully we'll, it'll be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah. Plus it's like a family, you know, like this, this, um, this industry is a lot of like sucking you dry. So when you can find someone that's super supportive yeah. and a family right. base, then it's like you can only be successful. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, question for Danielle. Uh, have you shown your kids a lot of your movies? Like of your yes. So I just showed them <laughs> ending of Halloween that. 4. It's on my Instagram, actually. Um, but it was weird because my older son, who was cool with it a couple years ago, I only showed them like one scene. I actually closed their eyes until, because they know like them, where they, they've seen photos of like Jamie covered in blood with the scissors, you know. My kids actually run around the house wearing Jamie masks with <laughs> pretending to stab each other. I'm like, you guys don't even know what you're doing. Unless you're not going to do, like, it's, of course it's Jagger trying you to stab her. Oh my god, so constantly. We came into my little wake in the day and he took the nose off of one of my my clown masks that I had, like, off. He, like, pulled the nose off and was wearing it and he was like, uh uh, I'm a clown. I was like, where did you get that? What are you doing in my office? I don't, that's mine. Thank god it wasn't the real one, you know. Um, so. I shouldn't the end, I close their eyes, and then I had them open their eyes when I'm just standing at the top of the stairs. And then my older one was like, I forget what he said, Carter was like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that, Mom? What are you doing? They're, they're gonna shoot you? They're not gonna shoot, they're gonna kill you? Like, he was just so concerned. And then my little one was just silent, and then was like, I wanna, can we go back to the beginning? And then my, my older one, Carter, was like, no, we're turning it off. And I got up to turn it off, so. Oh my god, and he wasn't like that when he was, you first? No, when I, no, because I was with my nephew, and he was more like, I wasn't scared, that was cool, and my nephew was shitting his pants. Uh, but I showed them the nightmare <laughs> scene, which was really stupid, the, under the, the scene where he comes oh up my under god, the bed. I know, that's so dumb. Oh my god. I know, I know, I was like, that's really not a good idea. But you guys know, when you watch movies, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that idea? Yes, but when you watch movies with your kids, that you grew up watching as kids, you don't realize how fucked up they are until you're in the middle of watching watching them with your kids. That's so different because that's mom. Well, yeah. It's been on TV. It was on AMC and I was trying to skip around, but then, you know, of course I happened to put it on when Kathleen Kenmont's like taking her bra off in the scene with Brady in front of the fireplace. They love that scene. And they're like, that's Aunt Kathleen. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna change that one right there. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so they haven't seen the They've seen a little bit of like, don't tell mom. They don't really, they, they, they care, but they don't really care. You know. They will, they will. When it gets them popular, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's school. They're gonna rave about. Guess my mommy. They'll be in the bathroom looking at like FHM photo, my photo shoots of my ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you are gonna be that mom. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> love it. Yes. Come on, I saw some more hands I didn't get to. No, I'm back there. All right. Did, okay. I mean, it's it's created a life for me. Yeah. Really, um, a community, and and it's I, honestly, it's thanks to Rob for bringing me back to the franchise that <laughs> rebooted that love um, that I thought had maybe been gone, you know, forever. Uh, and now you get into the the phase of like everyone's kind of getting up there, and it's just a big community. Um, it's been a it's been an absolute blessing. But we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, mm -hmm. your support, you know. And we know it. Yeah. We definitely know it. That's why we want to do things for you guys. <laughs> like a vacation for you guys. <laughs> like, how can we get back to y'all? What can we do for you guys? <laughs> Danielle, um, how was it working with Donald Pleasance? Because it was weird, like, in high school, like, you, were, you almost said, like, you were... You must have missed the beginning of the Q&A. Where were you in the beginning? <laughs> I, oh, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> I, 
I made mean, a funny joke about that scene where I'm like, like making a weird face and I smell bourbon on his breath because it was <laughs> late, at, late at night. He's lovely. Yeah. Another story I'll make it quick is uh, he only worked for I think like a couple days on Halloween Five and then he left and they were going to get rid of his. He had a big like Winnebago, like 40 foot. And I was like, oh my God, there's like a fridge in there and a bed in there. Because we were in what's called a honey wagon. You were in a honey wagon? We were in a triple banger. Which is like a, it's it's like a three room, three little teeny rooms that are there's about the size of a bathroom stall. Oh yes. Um, but I had a VCR, I was so happy. Yeah, but you were like, you, that, that was your movie. Well, that's what Donald said. He's like, wow. don't bring, don't get rid of it. She's the star. And he asked them to keep the trailer for me, which was super fun and really nice of him. And I felt like a star, you know, I don't know. I was just so excited to have a bed to lay down and appreciate it. Yeah, so appreciate it. That was cool. See, he was your friend protecting you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Did you guys see that? Uh, for Danielle, how was it working on Boy Meets World when you put the TK? Oh my god. Uh, that hairdo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that might be my favorite hairdo. Mine? Nice. Yeah. The, 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 the woo! <laughs> it looks exactly the same. <laughs> no, no, that was higher. It's like, it was higher. It's big. It's because y'all had a fucking Jennifer Aniston haircut. Yeah. Right? Everybody. <laughs> First, I had the Candace Cameron spiral perm, and then I went to the older I did Jennifer Aniston. Um, it was, I had a great, it was great. I had a great time. Uh, he was petrified of me. <laughs> I was 17, almost 18, and he was 13. And every time I went to kiss him, he would literally go back. <laughs> so I was said to the director, I was like, he's act like he likes me. I don't know what to do. I'm not trying to like, you know. That would be traumatizing for any sort of boy. At 13? But I mean, he's a 17 year old? Yeah. Oh and I was, I, you know, I was like all up in his business. So. And you're hot too, so yeah, I get it. It was super fun. I just did their podcast actually. They have a great podcast called yeah. Pod Meets World, so and they're doing lives and stuff, and I'm just really happy for them. That show's so classic. Yeah. Another one where studios fucked it up. Like they didn't yeah. make the new one for us, who would be the ones watching the show. They made it for a new generation who didn't give a shit. They didn't understand. Yeah. You know, they don't get it. Yeah. Crazy. What was your guys' uh, favorite uh, scene from the Rob Zombie movie? To shoot, <laughs> <laughs> to shoot her to watch. To shoot her to watch. You like being naked? <laughs> cool blood? Oh my god, there was so much fun on that floor. Man, I just had so much off. fun doing all of the scenes. I, re I, I loved working with everybody so different. You know, Tyler and I was like, I was the annoying little sister with him, so we were like constantly <laughs> like bugging each other. Our trailers were right next to each other, so it was constantly like slamming on his trailer, and like yeah. we were. I hear you peeing in there. Yeah, yeah, literally. I always knew when he was taking a dump. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> hey, I know you should poop there. Are you pooping? Are you pooping? He's like, oh, everywhere. Are you pooping? <laughs> um, and then you know, like Danielle, like you know, she was like a big sister to me. So when we did the second one, and, and it was her death scene. That was the first time, and still in my career, that I had a really hard time shaking it. And, and I had to leave the set because I was shaking and hyperventilating. And I just had to ask Rob for a second because it was just too real, you know? Um, yeah, that was, that was a hard one for me. And Malcolm, big flirt. Fucking had a huge crush on him. <laughs> so I was like, I loved working with him. Brad, you know, I'm a huge fan of Chucky. I had no idea. Brad was the voice of Chucky the entire time filming. <laughs> like, like a moron. And then at the second premiere, I brought all my Chucky shit. Yes. I was like, hey, you sign this stuff for me. <laughs> Such a moron. <laughs> but yeah, everybody was so cool. It was all good memories, man. I wish we'd go back. I know. Hey, it was my <laughs> Yeah? Who was that? Was that you? <laughs> my wife is texting. Uh, <laughs> There's some back there. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, That's when your hair was so big with Roseanne. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I was playing like a cheesy girl from Iowa, and Rosie wanted me to like look like the girls did in Iowa. That is suited you. You don't. It was perfect. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it was just as petrifying as it was in 1992. <laughs> she was, they were, everybody was pretty much exactly the same. 
Um, that, that's just scary to do. You know, that it's it's very hard. I hadn't actually done a sitcom since 1992, other than Boy Meets World. So it's a considerable amount of dialogue, and they change it late at night, and very you have to know it the next day. And it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And everybody's been doing it for so many years that it's easy for them. So I felt a lot of pressure um, to be good. And I never felt good in the old ones. I always felt like Sarah got all the funny lines and I just set her up all the time. So I always felt like I was doing a shitty job. So it's important for me to like, like do it, get it right this time. Um, what I didn't care for was that they did not tell me that my character was going to die or that I even had cancer. And spoiler, um, if you haven't seen it. So I didn't know until I think four days into filming when they keep giving me these weird notes, and I was like, I don't get it, I don't get it. And then I called the girls I on this group text with uh, Scout, Serena Vincent, and Tiffany Shepis, and I was like, okay, so they just told me right before Network Run Through that I'm dying of cancer in the show. So it changes everything that you've chosen to do. But they never said it in the show, so I didn't know it. It was never like part of the dialogue or anything. And then I thought I was gonna do a few more episodes, and then when I was doing press for, that episode aired, it was a double that night, and they were like, okay, we're gonna do pre-mortem and post-mortem interviews. And I was like, wait, what? Post-mortem? And they're like, oh, hang on a second. So the next episode, when it airs, you see your mom's gonna go over to her house and Diane's gonna go to your mom and say that she wants to go with you to Hawaii and your mom's gonna tell her that you died. And I was like, oh shit, they killed me. What a tearjerker. Dude, what the fuck? You couldn't have told me? Before I had it, like, so I was a little bit bummed out that, you know, we did. I was like, God, Molly and Darlene are finally friends, you know? We're dancing on tables and shit. Um, so it's it's a, scary, it's a scary show. Well, TV in general is really it's terrifying. It, with movies, you can play around, you can change lines, you can be interactive with your scene partner. TV, you got no fucking voice. No. It's what they put on that sheet, and if you miss one word, yeah. You gotta redo it. And it's a cost. Don't they change the sheets a lot? They change Constantly. every day. Every day. Constantly. Every night. I so you're already panicking. I would get to work at 6 yeah. in the morning, even though my call was until 8.30, because I needed those two hours in the yeah. morning to relearn everything, because they switch like one word or three words, or they put this line here instead of here, and you just have to be able to to, to remember all of that. And yeah. I had mom brain, so it was like, I can't, I just do it. I'm so nervous. Uh, it's funny, I was working on a show, Nashville, and it, it worked on that show, thank you, I worked on that show for a year, and I, I've never gone on a set where the series regulars are terrified of being fired. They were like, we gotta do, do a good job, we gotta do a good job. I'm like, you guys have been here for how many seasons? Oh, but it's yeah. like that every time I'm on, I, I, I'm on a TV show. Every time. Everybody's afraid of getting fired. It's just like a wizard behind the curtain on TV shows. Yeah. You don't know who's the, where the notes are coming from, if you're, who you're making happy, you know, it's, it's TV's, I don't like to do TV. Yeah. TV's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have time for one more question before I wrap it up. Mm -hmm. You wish it was you. Yeah. Okay, this is for Scout. So, had they made Halloween 3? Yes. And you, you were just <laughs> like, what did you want from your character? to fucking be a badass and, and, you know, join forces. You know, it's so crazy. I didn't know this. Rob was signed on to do three. We were signed on to do three. But the second one was so horrible with the Weinsteins. Like, the, the Rob and the Weinsteins were fighting the entire time. And he almost threatened to quit. And the only way that they got him to finish it is if they, were, if they took him off the third one. And he doesn't have to do the third one anymore. The wine team's really messed it up. Really, really did. And I remember when we got the offer, I was so excited to come back and be able to play her because um, I was really excited about where she could have gone. And Tyler and I were both ready. And we got the call, and they were like, the first thing they said was Rob was not a part of it. And um, they were like, we don't have a script. We are shooting in two months. And I remember I called Tyler, and like, what is happening? He's like, I don't know. He's like, I, should we do it? I don't, I don't know what to do. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's so crazy because I would have loved to have done the third one. But, but looking back at it now, I'm kind of glad that we didn't do it, especially without Rob. Um, I think it probably would have ended up not being very good. Um, so, you know, who knows? Maybe the TV show will both come back. Just put it out there in the universe. There's definitely a lot of yeah. love for those movies now, yeah. after this last one of the movies. <laughs> yeah. What did you guys think of the new ones? Uh, 
was fine until the last one. But it was, even then, it was still just fine. Yeah. You know? we, it was so crazy. We were at the premiere, and we were doing the um, the red carpet. And Danielle and I, when we were they were asking, are you so, so excited? We are like, yeah, we can't wait for the bloodbath, the battle between <laughs> Thor and Michael. <laughs> About 45 minutes in, I leaned over to my ex-husband and I'm like, something's got to happen soon. Oh, you should have saw me the premiere. I was like looking at Danielle, I was like, where is he? Where is he? Where is Michael? I was like, where is he? I was so bored. I was about to go to sleep. I said, something's got to happen soon. I think it was a really good movie about like, like the young kid was so talented. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was his movie. I was yeah. like, man, it, this is a good movie. I do love like that a opening. Serial killer. Oh, the, the opening, opening was the awesome. Was great. Oh, yeah. That's why I was like, oh, this could be good. Yeah. Well, I think the, the issue was is they raised the bar so high when the gore factor in 2018, and then the next one, and then took I it all think away. It's just the storyline. I think oh, that honestly. too. I think I think. But you could at least give us some blood. Yeah. Yeah. You can't yeah. give me a story with the blood. The ending, I thought I thought it could be saved because I thought it was gonna grab her yeah. and bring bring her in. I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay, so to wrap you guys up, I would like to go a little deep. Can I? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Can you share yeah. with us? Some... I am in therapy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're her teacher therapist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's called friendship therapy and it's real, okay? Can you share with all of us something important you've learned on a set, any set, um, just in general? There's telling you something important about life or the business that you've taken with you. Don't ever be late. <laughs> How many times have you been late on a set? I've been late once my whole career. Never. One time. I'm, I'm that person that's yeah. a weirdo that arrives an hour before and just yeah. sends my car. Yeah. You yeah. never know what can happen. Well, you just don't want to yeah. be the person everybody's waiting on. Ever. No. And I feel like a lot of the newer actors are like, don't get that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's not like a life skill. You know, but it's... we also grew up with like our. I, we were recording on film. Yeah. Like you didn't, you had to come to work on time and prepared because there was no, it was so expensive that even if, especially the indie film, like they would buy like what they call like loose ends, so you know you only had like three minutes and 20 seconds of film, but you had five minutes seen the film, and you're like, oh God, how are we going to get this? So you just have to be on point. Um, so I think that's, you know, it's like the bigger movie stars usually I've experienced are always kinder and more humble than the newer ones that are starting out kind of. Have yeah. a little bit of a difference. So, um, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Also, be kind. Yeah, be to, kind. Be kind to everyone, whether you just started in the industry or you've been here forever. Whether I mean, you're all someone people. being a PA for the first time, yeah. getting someone's lunch, or you're the executive producer, everybody should be treated the same way. And there's been a lot of actors we've worked yeah. with that we've seen that really set the bar for how crew should be treated. And make sure that you want to be there. You know? Yeah. Like, you know. We wake up and like this is what we want to do. Yeah. You know, it really does make a it makes a difference for sure. And I know as a woman, especially, I've learned from a lot of women in my career, Helen Mirren, Danielle, like all, all these like really like find your voice, especially when you're a woman working in this industry it's or hard. even a man. You know, like just don't be afraid to like speak up for yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's a good advice for any industry. Yeah. yeah sure. I've worked jobs, you're late once, you get written up, you're late twice, you're fired. Yeah. And be kind. You never know when you're going to have to go back to that job. Or who you're going to see. Or not again. We keep lists. Yeah. We know who not to work with. I think yes. I've had so many of these And talks. regular jobs do that, too. Yeah. yeah, I've had so many talks with people at my table. Like, we're all the same fucking, like, we're all human beings, you know? Like, we're all going through our own individual shit. And I think just being there for one another and having a good positive energy and being kind to one another, like, it makes a difference. So, it really does. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies. Drop that mic. Give it up. Please drop the mic.